Howdy doody, all you beautiful people. Welcome back. It is League Unlock. My name is Eric for a little special new type of epi. We're going to be introducing a little segment called Studs and Duds. And if you can't figure out the mystery behind the naming convention there, it's going to be the best and worst plays either weekly or this debut we're going through the entire spring split these are the moments you probably tried to forget from your favorite players the biggest oopsie whoopsie misplays of the spring split and we begin uh we got nine plays to get through and we begin with a guy who is accustomed to being on the other side of these types of lists talking about the best plays from a split it is one of the best players on the entire planet mr kiria and we're going to the hanwha life first round playoff series the scion support with the senna where he not only tps in flashes directly into the wall and then face plants with the cyan ulti we know what he was trying to do flash over the wall and then ulti into doran's jacks to take him down but when you press all those buttons so quickly and the first one is a bit of a whiff it's directly into the wall this is peak uh panic for t1 this is when they got the three owed by Hanwha Life and everybody was freaking out. Kyria, what's he doing? He's playing Scion support, flashing into the wall. This team is doomed. They've got absolutely no chance. T1 eventually bounces back in losers to take down Hanwha. But that is probably the most egregious and ugliest play that we've seen out of Kyria's entire career, mainly because it's pretty spotless uh, for the most part. So seeing him actually have a whoopsie moment is a rare occurrence. It's not a rare occurrence to be left scratching your head when D plus Kia makes a somewhat boneheaded macro decision. And that is exactly what happened in one of their games against Fox or Fear X, where they just, they let Willer flash into the Baron pit and don't do anything. The Baron's sitting at like 3000 health for a few good seconds and Willer just casually smites it. He eventually goes down, but damage is done. He stole the Baron. I don't know what the comms for D plus are here. No one's deciding, hey, maybe we should like kill the little piggy before we try and take down the purple worm, but just an absolute masterclass of disaster out of the D plus boys on how to not orchestrate a successful Baron flip. Uh, I mean, that I guess that was orchestrating a successful Baron flip, but it had no business needing to be a flip. Uh, the D plus macro. <sighs> continues uh, its 2024 spring theme of making people want to lose their hair. That's actually why, you know, I watched a lot of D plus games. That's why I'm sitting where I'm at right now. Then we get to one of the goats of all time. I guess that's what the O of goat is. But uh, Mr. Rookie, often stuck in ELO hell. Game 5 versus World Elite. The patented Aurelian soul pick for him. And originally everyone was flaming Fotic and other members for this play, but pay close attention it's rookie who does the absolute deepest of betrayals auto attacking the super mega omega powerful blast cone onto Fotix senna who immediately then has to flash away from four members of world elite and he doesn't die there but it eventually comes to bite him in the rear end as he gets flashed on a mere 60 seconds later and eventually gets blown up Luckily, NIP would hold on to win this game and have a somewhat deep run into playoffs, but the entire series almost went away in that single oopsie poopsie moment from Rookie uh, attacking that blast cone. That's something we see all the time. Uh, our players either accidentally or trying to make a play and knocking somebody else into the opposing team for blast cones. By the way, I think Blast Cones have been around for like six years now. They still feel like a relatively new mechanic to me. Maybe it's because people are still knocking teammates into the opposing squads, but uh, they've been around for a long time. So you'd think people would be better at dealing with them. Uh, rookie, one of the best mid laners of all time making this list. Faker, the greatest mid laner of all time. Also in a game five setting and in the same series, he had one of the best plays of the entire split. And when we get to the studs of spring, we'll highlight Faker's play there. But for now, we're talking duds. And it was a big dud that he put in game five against Gen G. Ah, 
the Oriana, trying to have some fun with the Rift Herald, but my man, the Unkillable Demon King, forgot about his one Kryptonite, and that is Poppy on the opposing team, denying him the bounce back out of the Herald. Faker just charges in under turret, four members, actually five members, everyone on Gen G, casually sitting there waiting for him. That took away pretty much all the momentum T1 had. Not that they had a ton of momentum, but it shifted the momentum the way of Gen G because they couldn't contest Dragon. They lost all map control that they would have otherwise had because Faker, uh, I genuinely think just forgot about how that poppy interaction works with the Rift Herald, which again, somewhat newer mechanic, being able to actually drive around these Rift Heralds, but uh, very rare to see the GOAT player making a mistake like that. It ultimately, that wasn't the sole reason that T1 was dropping game five, but it definitely didn't help. Um, definitely didn't help them win that. And now... We continue the theme of some of the best mid laners of all time making absolute head scratching plays, but even more egregious than the rookie Blast Cone or the Faker Rift Herald is what Zhao Hu was doing early on in the spring split against LNG. I don't know what angle he's seeing here with the Oriana that makes him flash into four people, try and kill someone with an ulti. The only person he was possibly going to hit there was Milio. Milio ends up flashing it. Even if he doesn't, okay, you killed the support and now you are behind enemy lines in front of four people. I don't, there was some vision that Xiaohu saw there that nobody else would see. This is this is Spring Emperor uh, Xiaohu and I, I, I truly don't know the angle that he was looking at there, but Rookie, Faker, and Xiaohu, some of the very best spin leaders of all time. That doesn't mean sometimes their brain doesn't get a little bit turned off and uh, they make a little oopsie, poopsie, whoopsie kind of moment. And that's exactly uh, what Xiaohu did there. LPL aggression at its finest, coming to bite him in the butt. Don't worry. A few spots later, NIP are back on this list. It's not Rookie. This time he is truly in ELO hell, watching his team feed a little bit because this engage by Zhuo's Recon makes absolutely no sense. He's going in 1v2 with zero follow-up. He goes in for the dash, misses everyone, and then flashes out before the knock-up animation has even finished. And if that was where the play ended, you'd go, okay, that was bad, he lost the flash. But no, it ends up baiting in the entire NIP lineup in a fight that they have absolutely no avenue of winning. And this is in playoffs, guys, that ends up being a full ace. Rookie is left just saying, what the hell did I get myself into with this squad? Ends up being a 5-0 ace for JDG. And what... What is the idea there? What does Zhuo think could happen? He's not even level 6 yet at this point as I don't know what the comms were here, but I can tell you afterwards it was probably people saying, uh, what the hell were you doing? As uh, Zhuo and Aki at times throughout the entire spring split were definitely not on the same page as the rest of the ninjas in pajamas lineup. But that was a big whoopsie that pretty much ended up being a goodbye to NIP and their run in playoffs. It's JDG eventually eliminated them, but don't worry, they get worse on this list than that engaged by Rakan because when you have your hyper carry, AD carry, Kogma roaming around the map, coming in for a bot lane gank against a 40% health Aatrox, and D plus is aiming, decides he's gonna stutter step, take two free turret shots for free, and then Dudu just flashes in to get the kill aiming. What are you doing? And it gets even worse because now the Kog'Maw's dead and it's a 2v1 in the bot lane. KDF says, great, free Baron, thanks. They're not D plus, they don't just let somebody walk in, but aiming, this is, the E absolutely hits nobody. What the stutter step? You're not even, it would look cool if you were dodging the turrets, but he takes two. This fan can't believe it. He's used to being a D plus Kia fan though, so maybe he can believe it, but aiming truthfully, not the greatest of spring splits, and that was probably the lowest of lows. Uh, a, a bit of a, we'll call it a yucky one uh, out of him on the Kog'Maw. It was also a yucky one in playoffs. Game three, do or die for Niski on SK Gaming, and again, there's a bit of redemption, not quite redemption, but evening things out when we get to the good plays in another video. Niski's also on there, but this Corky 
package delivery system said farewell to SK Gaming. And uh, you listen to the comps here. Niski even basically says, uh, I inted it. And yes, he absolutely inted it. But at least they were on the same page where SK Gaming because immediately afterwards, Exakick says, don't worry, in a 4v5, I'll show some redemption and dash in on the Lucian, down a man, get blown up immediately. So instead of just Niski getting caught out, Let's give him the Baron too and completely throw the whole series. But there's no angle where this was gonna work out for Niski. He even, he actually doesn't even get the second Valkyrie off. You know, usually guys package in and immediately Valkyrie out and then get blown up. He doesn't even have time to pop that second part of the Valkyrie because he gets obliterated so quickly. So you could probably honestly do an entire montage of just bad corky Valkyries uh, over the years. Again, even the best of the best players have had them. Chovy, Faker, we've all seen them dash in and get blown up immediately because they just want to stack up the damage numbers. And they usually do before they get blown up uh, with that ulti. But that was a, a sour taste to leave as the reminder of what was for SK and Niski in that spring split. But it's not the number one or the top dud of the spring split and you'll be forgiven if you forgot about this one because we're going way back to the first week or two of LPL action his first series in his return to JD gaming it is Yagao on his ear and my favorite part of this play is right before the big whoopsie moment they even have a little graphic that's highlighting our boy uh <laughs> 100% kill participation. Look at Yagao. He's probably going to get player of the game here. And he ends up dying to a turret with nobody around. Even failing the Azir dash while taking a turret shot. This is uh, truly one of the worst plays in the history of not just the LPL, but just professional play. <laughs> oh, the pig is getting slammed in. Question mark pings, at least Yagao was laughing, at least JDG ended up winning this one, but this is this is honestly right up there with the LCS double Rift Herald death because it's one thing if he just wasn't paying attention, took three, four turret shots and died, but he's well aware and tries to dash out with the Azir, completely whiffs it and dies anyways. So that that's a that's a full round of applause for Yagao for the absolute uh disaster play. Now he would bounce back and actually have a pretty solid split with JDG, thankfully. And again, they win that series. But wow, uh, one week into the split, you knew this was probably going to be the ugliest play of the entire split. Maybe even the entire year. We'll revisit at the end of summer at Worlds and probably still be talking about that Yagao. Ooh, cringe maneuver. But no shortage of whoopsie plays from some of the best players on the planet doesn't matter how much you practice. You're going to have a misclick. You're going to get a little bit too hypey. Case in point, these nine plays today, as I mentioned, we'll look at the good side of things and have the best plays from spring in another video. But that is it today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric. You people stay beautiful as always. And thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on that flippity flip.